this episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by Skillshare. Dude, click that link below. First 1,000 of you guys get a free premium trial. Heads up team, this is normally the part of the year where we would hype up Black Friday over at scamstuff.com gear for the modern rogue. Not this year. 2020 has kicked us in the crotch and we figured we would just keep it simple. Whatever the lowest price is we've ever done for anything, then it's lower. That's what we're doing. Now the bad news is it means we will sell out of a lot of stuff. In fact, some of the items are already sold out. The point is you don't have to worry about being too early or too late. We've made it dead simple and you get the lowest prices we've ever had. You may think we're honorable, we're not. We're lazy. Hashtag screw it 2020. Do we know anything about how we started with something beautiful like this and ended up with that abomination of atrocity? <laughs> how it got perverted? Uh, yeah, right? Uh, because America, Brian. Oh, yeah, no, that does make sense. Finally, back again at an undisclosed location that is most certainly not definitely our sound stage. No, not at all. Don't you say <laughs> Shut your mouth! <laughs> We're back again with Barstool Theory of Instagram. The man himself, Trevor, is so good to see you again, man. I just realized we're beginning like our own booze cinematic universe. We are gonna begin, what, a rum arc here? The history of rum is so encapsulating. Uh, I think everyone can take something from it. There's so many different points in history that just affected the world and how it is today. If I may. Oh, go on. <laughs> Back in uh, BCE in the Indus Valley, uh, Alexander the Great's naval leader saw a bunch of the locals kicking back drinking uh, fermented sugarcane drinks. And uh, shortly after that, well, okay, about a thousand years after that, Christopher Columbus, notorious bastard, went and planted sugarcane everywhere he went. And it uh, proliferated, of course, throughout the Caribbean and Puerto Rico and Jamaica and Haiti and et cetera, et cetera. Everybody was like, hey, this rum stuff is great. And everybody liked it. And the British, decided to include it as a part of the rations for the Navy. And uh, Wait, uh, this is around what time? This was around the 17th century, if I'm not mistaken. And of course it legendarily became the preferred drink of pirates everywhere. So that's no BS, like the whole pirates love and rum thing. And Captain Henry Morgan. Yeah. Notorious buccaneer. Boy. Gave up piracy to uh, get some plantations in Jamaica. Wow. So what drink are we learning today? Today I wanted to talk about the perfect cocktail. The daiquiri. Okay, uh, I, I'm gonna reserve judgment. I am somebody who is, I have an inherent revulsion to overly sweet fruit-based things. Sell me. Oh, that's right, it yeah. does. Yeah. Why this is the perfect cocktail is because it's perfectly balanced between sweet, tart, boozy. Perfectly balanced, like the Infinity Gauntlet. With each stone being a different type of taste that you recognize, the last being the umami snap. Oh, you're talking about the Infinity Tongue? The, the that... Infinity Tongue, yes. <laughs> he goes, he goes, and then have uh, all your drinks disappear. <laughs> this is, I, hold on, uh, let me get a pen. <laughs> That's actually pretty similar. To, yeah. It's the perfect drink. And if you think about, say, the margarita and the parts that make up a margarita, it's the lime, yep. it's the sweet. And then a salty rim. Yeah, you have all these flavor profiles. It comes from the base of a daiquiri. Uh, the margarita would kind of be like the tequila version of a daiquiri, yeah. just like the gimlet is the gin version. Consider oh, me two steps closer to your side now, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like sweet drinks, so here's one that's made of just sugar. Well, no, no, no but it's gonna have that acid ice, so I don't know, I, I, I'm assuming. How about he show us? Sounds good to me. With this drink, we're gonna be using crushed ice because when you're making drinks with rum, a lot of times, like, I'll be using some overproof varieties here. You want more dilution, so we're gonna use crushed ice so we get a little bit of water in there. Got it. Water is our friend in this instance. Okay, so first we're gonna start with our lime juice, which we're just gonna do one ounce here. Next, we're gonna add our sweetener, which I did a fruit concoction here. Just is to, it, wait, is this a, one of your shrubs? No, not a shrub. This is kind of like a shrub without the vinegar, but. I didn't know, now I found out, I just found out there was vinegar in those shrubs. And explain to me what the heck is a shrub? It is a maceration, which means to soften or break down. You are gonna have a vegetable, herb, root or fruit and then you're going to break that down with its own sugars by adding sugar and then adding vinegar and today uh, i want to be using oftd from plantation now the reason i love this rum is one if you'll take a look at the percentage 69 yep nice nice two uh oftd to get it on the bottle it stands for old-fashioned traditional dark but when they first tasted this rum the distiller said oh 
That's delicious. No. No way. <laughs> so that's the story behind this, and it's my favorite rum. Where's this from? So this is from Barbados. When I, we were doing the lime and the sugar, we did one and one. Mm -hmm. So now we're just gonna go two. Okay. So. Which by the way, that, that sounds fairly potent given the fact that this is a 69% rum. Oh, it's very potent. <laughs> <laughs> But, like I said, we're gonna be using crushed ice, which is our friend in this instance. <laughs> I feel like that's such a justification, like, oh, come on, oh, Ma, yeah. it's crushed ice. Yeah, it's fine. I don't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about the amount of shaking that you do. In this case, you mentioned that crushed ice is our friend specifically because it'll be diluted, so I assume there's a little bit more shaking than you might do for something else. Oh yeah, it doesn't take much. And a lot of times you'll see, especially with rum drinks, you'll see what's called a dirty dump where you just shake it and then dump the ice with it. But we are gonna strain this one. And this is, this is a, what type of, I know you told us this. Oh, this is a coupe. A coupe, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, uh, the French are obsessed with the, the, the boobies. Yes. Wait, so that's it? Just that's uh, it? Just one ounce, one ounce, and two ounces of super powerful uh, dark Barbados rum? Absolutely. Okay, what am I supposed to do to properly appreciate this? Take in the bouquet there. The bouquet. Mm -hmm. bouquet, yeah, the bouquet. bouquet. The bouquet. The bouquet. Yeah, no, that is delightful and floral and light. Wow, I didn't know that lime juice was going to be so prominent. Here we go. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did it, it. I did it again. Dang. I did it again. We need a wow counter. It's a, it's a genuine surprise yeah. every time because in this case, when I think of daiquiris, I think about nothing but number one, spring break 97, and nothing but like sugar over full whatever. Sure. But, but this is way, whatever that, that simple syrup is, uh, seems to be way lighter on the sweetness than I had expected. This gets the brine seal of approval for being kind of bitter and hard to drink. This in no way is what I thought a daiquiri was. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of people are gonna think frozen, you know, the strawberry varieties from say a Friday's or, you know, Applebee's or something like that, but that's not truly what a daiquiri <laughs> is. Casual <laughs> dining restaurants tried to ruin the cocktail scene. Ugh, freaking Columbus got us again. <laughs> <laughs> so you approve, could you see yourself uh, drinking? Uh, yeah, although I would still be nervous going up to a classy bar and saying, give me a daiquiri for fear that somebody's gonna walk over to a machine and just, you know. Oh, yeah, well that's usually <laughs> how they have a styrofoam <laughs> cup over here. Right, if, right. if you see that run. Okay, so to recap. Okay, we've got one ounce of lime juice, one ounce of this whatever that is. <laughs> it's a simple syrup that is infused. With some, what did you, didn't you use like gummy fruits? Like Welch's gummy fruits? Yeah. No, you didn't. He yes, did, I, I saw him oh do it. Oh my God, all right, yeah. <laughs> so one ounce of lime juice, one ounce of simple syrup with Welch's gummy fruits. <laughs> it, says, it says it's real fruit. <laughs> and two ounces of just oh, remember that's delicious. just remember that phrase man boy that's good branding by the way and where can people follow so much more of your adventures barstool theory on instagram and twitter heck yeah dude barstool theory salute where does most of your learning come from the gutter the gutter you mean the internet you're absolutely right <laughs> two on the nose man <laughs> <laughs> oh you know what i wish jason is that there would be a curated selection of high quality tutorials for people who are passionate about learning from the best of various disciplines whether you're a dabbler or a master skillshare has thousands of curated classes that you can take and the operative word is curated because a human being is going to look at this and say yes this is top quality instruction this is something that's going to get you ahead in life it's not something that's selected by a random robot that is secretly trying to sell you an energy drink or something. I can't tell you how many times I have tried to learn something online because that's where all of my learning comes from. And you and ended it's... up on the modern road. Ended Look, up on the modern I road. Understand. All Unable did, to do it. They cut off their hands. <laughs> chop, chop. You know how many times I've tried to do something that I learned online and ended up bleeding? <laughs> you do know. It's a lot. Let us serve as the example that you should never ever be. And in fact, give me a course. I like uh, writing for expression by Hanif Abdurraqib. It teaches you how to write with a more uh, poetry in your fiction. Name one thing you've written recently that's available on a certain online, doesn't matter. Look, the You'll important thing is that the first 1,000 people who click our link below will get a premium trial over at Skillshare and we thank them for all of our support right here at the Modern Rogue. So get to clicking and you're learning. Get your learn on. Offer and link in the description below. Wow! What's funny, I, I didn't know he gave up pri piracy. I, I figured he was always a pirate. Well, you know. As I, sometimes I go and I download the torrents. <laughs> <laughs> so it is. Exactly. <laughs> He's got all of the episodes of Sopranos before anybody else. <laughs>